So the engine is in. This is a turbo engine from a Volvo V70, a B5254T. It is not the best T5 engine, to be honest. It's not very good for tuning or trying to get a lot of horsepower out of. So we'll basically use this engine as kind of a mock-up just to get the engine brackets and everything in. And then we can swap the engine out later. The reason I bought it is because it was really, really cheap. According to the seller, it has done 100,000 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles, but it's not very long. Usually these engines, if you get them today, you know, you can, I think you should consider yourself lucky if you can get one that has done 200,000. If it's true, if it is a 100,000 kilometer engine, I think it's a pretty sweet deal for 3,000 Swedish kroner, which is about $300. And of course, we're gonna tune this up anyway. I highly doubt that we're going to use the Volvo original engine management system. We're probably going to go aftermarket on this engine just because I want to be able to swap engines in the future. Maybe like the dream would be to run a V8 and maybe a 540 BMW engine, the M60, M62. That would be a dream and maybe use that and turbocharge it. That would be nice. But this is what we got now and it's a good start. It's pretty simple. You basically just smack it in there. It's not that difficult. We're gonna go through everything that you need to know. And of course, you know, maybe a few things will be kind of unique to the different models. Look at that, there's a bug here, it's a fly. What the hell? It's March, I don't get it. Things we're gonna run into issue-wise is probably engine mounts. I highly doubt that the engine mounts are gonna be just smack on and ready to go. I don't know if we're going to do much more than put this up in a stand today. Maybe I'll take some pieces off that we're not going to use. We're not going to use this electronic uh, intake. What's it called? Throttle body? Yeah, throttle body. We're not going to use the electronic throttle body. We're going to use a manual one, probably from the 960. We'll see how we get that on there. Like I said, I've never done this before, so this is all new to me. So we're going to learn as we go, so to speak. So yeah, let's get started. First, I gotta go up on the Addict. Attic? I think it's called Attic. Not sure. I'm gonna put my old lights up there and we're gonna bring down the engine stand. Bear with me, I'm learning. It was a long time ago I spoke English. Okay, so we already run into trouble here. I don't know where my wheel is. Anyone see my wheel? Crap. Well, I can't find the fucking thing, so we're just gonna have to carry on without it. It's just gonna have to work, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. Okay, we'll show it. Running into problems quite right away. I don't know. Oh, that must be the um, oxygen sensor. That one in particular. That one doesn't go anywhere. No, nope. it goes to the. Probably goes right here. It must be the reverse light. We're just gonna get this thing off. I don't really know how to get it off. But we will figure it out. Okay, so it's just like a Christmas tree. So it has these tiny, we call these Christmas trees. I don't know what it, what they're actually called. But you just pull these out and this plastic thing will just come right off. I went off and turned the fan off because it's making one hell of a noise. And there you go. For that must be for the uh, cabin heater. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how much stuff I need to remove here. We'll just get started with all these bolts holding the transmission to the engine and uh, we'll take it from there.
before we can remove the starter motor, we're gonna have to uh, get these off. The uh, starting wires. What is it called? Starter cables? Yeah, the power cables basically to the starter. We're gonna have to get rid of those first. And I always put the, the nut back, so I know where that is. And it seems like we have a bracket way in here. Let's see if I can get focus on that. Yeah, it's way back there. Very hard to see. That one had a bunch of Loctite on it. I don't know why. So now we can go ahead and remove the starting motor. Let's say number 14. Seems to be 14 instead of 15 and 12 instead of 13. Everything you think is 13 is 12 and everything you think is 15 is 14. That should do it. Now we should be able to remove the starting engine. I am currently waiting for cabinets. So all my tools are in boxes right now. So we're gonna have to get a little inventive on this one. All you need is a big ass hammer and then you hit this guide pin, you just hit the guide pin until the starter motor pops out. Now, when you can see that it's ready to pop out, you just grab it, pull it out. You don't need to remove it, you can just pull it back. So it's not in the way when we let go of the rest of the bolts. Okay, so now we're on the back side or front side of the engine. Well, we're, I'm guessing we're going to call this the front side now since it's going to be the front. Anyway, we're going to continue removing the bolts now. And we're going to start up here and move our way around the entire transmission until we get all the bolts. bolt on this side is down here right down there by the drive shaft now we're on the other side of the engine I'm gonna start removing these bolts right here And the final bolt on top here is on this side of the engine. It's right down there. I have decided to remove the RPM sensor, this is the crank position sensor, because I will definitely just mash this thing if I try to remove the transmission with this thing still on here. I'm just going to be smart for once and try to remove this beforehand. this is the correct way to do this but well I know this is not the correct way to do this but I'm gonna do it anyway that's what I'm trying to say okay so this thing seems to be riding on a on a pin of some sort so we're gonna have to uh, just try to get the sensor itself out I was hoping I could get the entire bracket and everything but I guess not I'm just gonna pop that up there we don't ruin it. We'll just leave that one alone. Hmm, worked. Okay, so now we're going to remove the last bolts. We're on the exhaust side of the engine. And we're going to start with this one. Take side of the engine. We're gonna remove 
the last bolt if I can get the camera to fix it there we go I'm also going to put one bolt back on the top side of the trans transmission here so it doesn't just fall out it seems to be coming off pretty easy yeah I'm definitely going to snap that bolt well that sucks so I got it moving a little bit. That's a good sign. I managed to find some WD-40, which is not really meant for this, but you just have to do. Try to get the bolt loose and spray it. Keep going at it because it's it's a lot easier to try to get the bolt out and succeed than you know just ignoring it and pulling it off and trying to replace it later. Yeah, so that's how that looks like. Kind of took the threads with it. So we're going to have to put... Actually, we're not, because we're not going to use this transmission. Huh. Fuck it. Okay. That should be all the bolts holding the uh, transmission to the engine. So we're just gonna try to get this, this transmission off right now. It doesn't seem very heavy. I think I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a jack under here. Crap. I forgot about the drive shaft. So I'm not using it. So. Ooh. That thing has been on there for a while. Whoops. Oh, that fucked my floor up now. Oh, crap. Okay, that didn't go very smooth, but we got here anyway. What we need to do now is remove the clutch and flywheel so we can get it into the engine stand. It looks like this is Torx 40, maybe 45. So what we're gonna do now is remove the clutch, the entire package with the pressure plate, the, uh, I don't know what that's called, lamel, uh, clutch plate. So we're going to remove the clutch, the clutch plate, and the uh, flywheel. It is a uh, Torx uh, 40, TX40. And we just start removing these all the way around. You don't want to completely take, take them out one by one. But you want to go around like this and crack every one. And then you just kind of slowly bring the clutch out. This is not a very hard clutch, so it's not very difficult to remove. You don't want to get the, I don't know what that's called, side tensions. You don't want to, you don't want to create tensions ever when you're working with cars. Okay, so the tension, now it's all loosey-goosey. We can start, we can get all these screws taken out. Actually, I'm gonna leave the top one. Remember to save these. I usually put them back on the, on the flywheel so you don't lose them. Let's just take this one as well. Just pull this off. It's quite easy. Oh no, this is, this one's giving me a kind of hard time. 
Yeah, don't drop the clutch like that. You don't want to damage it. Yeah, this one's kind of worn. Not too bad. It's been running hot. You can see it's been running hot. It's all blue. Yeah, so this is no good. We're going to have to replace this. Pressure plate looks good. You can tell that this engine has been sitting for quite a while. There's a lot of rust. This is supposed to move, but it doesn't move at all. It actually feels kind of broken. Like, this is not lining up. It should be, this should move. It is just very stuck. So this is no good. I'm mm, going to have to check that out. Well, I highly doubt I have a tool that will remove those. I'm going to see what we do about that. Okay, we, we have seriously run into problems now. Turns out I do not have this type of tool. I think it's called an N12. It has 12 points. It's like a Torx, but 12. Hmm. Well, I guess that's it for today. Continue on tomorrow. These are the things that happen sometimes. Okay, so now it's day two. And I have been to my friend's house and gotten some tools. So I got this retainer and I got these in 12. I think they're called in 12, I'm not sure. Look that up. So now we can continue. And hopefully, yes. So it turns out it is, say anything on this, M12. So this is an M12. I don't know what that stands for. Okay, so we're gonna have to get these out. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to do this without the engine turning over. Nope. Uh, there are two ways you can do this. Either you block the, um, the flywheel. You can kind of block it right here. If you can focus. You can block it with a screwdriver like this. And probably crack the bolt that way. Or, you could just get the air compressor going and use power tools, which is what I am going to do. This thing is so rusted on here. It is crazy. Here we go. Whoops. that one kind of hanging loose. I'm going to try it like this instead of a screwdriver on each side and just kind of wiggle it out. There we go. Make sure you don't lose these. Probably hard to get. Okay, so now we're gonna try to uh, get the engine into the stand. Okay, so now we need to get this to fit, and we need a bolt that is long enough to go through the entire thing. Okay, so now we have our pieces. That took a long time. Now we can finally put 
this engine stand holder into place. Well, that's just about everything for today. Things didn't really go as smooth as I thought, especially with these bolts. That was very annoying, trying to find the right ones and cutting them and all that stuff. And then we had the freaking wheel on this thing, which I stole from this one. This old floor jack stole the wheel. It's now on there. It doesn't fit at all, but who cares? At least now we can roll it around. So yeah, so that's basically it for today. Uh, we're gonna continue this series. I'm not guaranteeing that the next clip will contain anything about this RBD build because it's a project that is gonna run through the channel. It is not gonna be the sole thing we're gonna do, but there will be more of this. At least now the engine is up in a stand and we can properly work on it. We got a lot of work before we can put this engine into a car. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, stay tuned for the next one.